All right, so let's talk about the FRQA from Unit 3. Um, they give you a table of values. Notice it's a table for F, a function F, and its derivative. And then immediately they ask you questions about G, which is defined as a composition of F with 2x minus x squared. So first question asks to find G prime of negative 1. So first I have to find G prime of x. And to do that, that's, of course, the chain rule. Outside function is F, so derivative of that is F prime. Leave the inside function alone and then multiply by the derivative of what's inside. Now I'm ready to find g prime of negative 1, so I plug in negative 1 for all the x's. That will be negative 2 minus positive 1, so negative 3, and then times 2 minus negative 2, so 4. And then f of negative 3 is given in the table. Sorry, f prime of negative 3 is given in the table. It's negative 2. So this is negative 2 times a positive 4, which is a negative 8. Now, part b. It's known that g double prime is equal to 0. What's the value of f double prime? So don't let that throw you. Just go ahead and find g double prime first. I would use the product rule. So see, g double prime of x would equal f prime of 2x minus x squared times the derivative of 2 minus 2x, which is negative 2 plus 2 minus 2x times the derivative of f prime, which we already found before, but again, chain rule, derivative of f prime is f double prime, leave the inside alone, and then multiply by the derivative of what's inside, which is 2 minus 2x, so there'd be another one of those there. Now, we're told that when we plug 0 in for all the x's, this whole thing equals 0. So this will equal 0 when we plug in 0 for all the x's. So 2 times 0 minus 0 is 0. That's times negative 2 plus 2 minus 0 is 4. Sorry, 2 minus 0 is 2. Squared is 4. And then f double prime of 0. Now, we're wanting to find the value of f double prime of 0. And if you look at the table, we're told what f prime of 0 is. It's 4. So 0 equals 4 times negative 2. And that means f double prime of 0 has to equal 2. Now, third part question. Is there a value for it such that g of c equals 2? This sounds a lot like intermediate value theorem. So I look at the problem and say, is it differentiable or continuous? Because it's really what I'm looking for. And the problem says f is twice differentiable, which means it's continuous. And anytime you compose two functions that are continuous, the result is continuous. So yes, g is continuous. So now I'm going to look at the values of the endpoints. So I want g of 0 and g of 3. Well, g of 0 would be f of 2 times 0 minus 0, and g of 3 would be f of 2 times 3 minus 3 squared, so that would be negative 3. And then the table provides both of those values. So f of 0 is negative 1, f of negative 3 is 5. And notice that 2 is in between negative 1 and 5. So since g is continuous, By the intermediate value theorem, yes, there must be a value at g of c equals 2 because it's between negative 1 and 5. And then the last problem. Last problem says, let h be a function with the first derivative. So they've given you a derivative already. And then they want that derivative to equal the rate of change of f. So they're talking about two different functions here, one with the a rock, that's f, and one with the i rock, that's h, that they've already provided you. So my a rock for f for that interval would be f of 4 minus f of 0, all over 4 minus 0. And I can use the table to get those values. f of 4 is 7 minus f of 0 is negative 1. So that's going to give me 2. And then I want that to equal the, uh, the instantaneous rate of change of h. Well, they've already given me that. I don't need to take a derivative. It's just that thing. So I would use my calculator to set 4x times e to the x equal to 2, and then I would solve that. And I've already done it before, and it is 0 0.352. And again, on the calculator parts, which this one is, if you're using your calculator to solve an equation, you don't need to show any work, just the equation and straight to the answer.